أقدم لكم مدير المستشفى الدكتور سليمان حسين لافتتاح هذه الجلسة أو الورشة العمل. الإخوة الضيوف دي بارتيسيبانس إن ذيس إمبورتنت ورشوب هي جيف مي جريت بليجر أند أونر يعني تو هوست ذيس إمبورتنت ورشوب إن سوبا يونيفرسيتي هوسبيتال. And the fact if we ask ourselves two questions, why is this workshop and why in Sobe University Hospital? And I think the answer for the first question, if you go back to the days of Kachinan Medical School, and we remember the heritage of almost nearly 100 years of medical education in this country, and when we find ourselves we are the predecessors of this heritage, I think the answer now is easy because we belong to the University of Khartoum. And the Faculty of Medicine historically had been leading the profession. But what changed? This hasn't been taught. It wasn't formally taught. For a long time, if he, I think if Professor Zen, when he was a young a consultant in 1970s, late 70s, uh, Professor Mahalis, <laughs> <laughs> he decided to make this workshop. I think people will face this with a bit of resentment. How come you talk? How can you teach uh, professionalism? Professionalism is something which is uh, taught by apprenticeship. You work for Professor Dawood and that is it. You work for Professor Ahmed Ahmed Hassan and that is it. You don't need any more. And how many medical students, 120 medical students, and how many medical schools? Only one medical school, probably at that time two, three. So I think change has happened with this plethora of development in medical education and this heterogeneity of, uh, of medical schools and medical trainers and medical students where there is no gold standard now for professionalism. So I think that the role modeling may be very difficult to be the gold standard for teaching professionalism. Because of all this, it has to be taught in a formal way. The next question, as I said, why in Soba University Hospital? And I, this, this is a commitment, part of the commitment of the medical school, of our medical school, which had been, as I said, doing this for ages. And we have to continue with this. And we have to take over the hands, and we have to help our colleagues from all other medical schools. And we, we do feel that the medical profession, yes, now we are having almost 26 medical schools, 25,000 medical students now in waiting for graduation. With all, if you look at the resources, the limited resources available to everybody, we find that it's very difficult for any medical school to have its own format of teaching professionalism. So why not we concentrate this on somewhere where we find all the facilities? You find the venue, you find the trainers, and it is a commitment. And this is actually the mission of this hospital, part of our mission for quality in medical education. And what we keep saying that this, it is not for our medical school, but we have to extend the message for, our, for the medical profession in the country at large. I think this, this is going to be a long day. I don't want to go in the principle of, uh, of uh, professionalism. But as a clinician, there is something a bit worrying me that with this plethora of technology now, where do we stand? What is the impact of the technology on professionalism? And I just I give you an example. Somebody who had a chest pain, probably the junior will call the consultant and say that this, he developed chest pain. The answer is the next question, I think that you correct me if I am wrong, Dr. <laughs> Muhammad Ali, that the has, 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 
What about his ECG? The ECG shows a bit of a ST segment elevation or whatever. Okay, is he stable? Yes, I think it's better to get an echo. Yes, and then you run the echo, shows a bit of hypokinesia in the left ventricle. It's better to go for a catheter. Where is the patient in between all this ladder? ECG, echo, catheterization, and probably uh, some uh, inter uh, interference. You find that the patient is lost in between those. Somebody with a headache. It used to be in the, world, in the old days, somebody would sit beside the patient, check his pulse. Remember that increasing cranial pressure is associated with bradycardia. Check his fundus, looking for papillary edema. And what that means for the patient? It means somebody sitting beside the patient, holding his hand, talking to him. And this is what gives the patient the confidence in the profession. But when the answer for a headache is a CT scan, and when you come in the world round, and people talk to the CT scan, not to the patient, and then they decide on the CT scan, not on the patient. Am I wrong in saying that this is a common example of practice nowadays? Am I wrong in saying that we have to sit and we decide where the patient, to, where can we feed the patient among this place sort of technology? I think a lot of questions have to be answered, and I'm very, to repeat, thank for everybody, and special thank for the, our colleagues, Dr. Isam and Ihab, and the rest of the professionist group, and uh, we promise that we are going to, they are going to have all the support in this hospital, and another way for our for uh, to resume, as usual, will be very supportive for all the uh, for the missions of the medical council because I think this is also part of the bread and butter of the mission of this medical of this hospital as well as medical school. Thank you very much. Okay.